and she wants to work with, I don't know who, I don't know who the designer of the, of the dress is, but I could easily find out. And we could sort of maybe get something else designed, you know, specifically for the show and just kind of, so basically it's a kind of experiment for her. Um, because it uses all her disciplines and she also studies, uh, she's been to Japan to study judo. Uh, so, so she has a kind of, there's a, a kind of great physicality about her realizing something that is kind of intangible but very strong. Because the easiest thing to do since James, the ex-boyfriend, was kind of instantly successful, or was very successful. The temptation for her as a young kid of 22, 23 at the time, might have been to jump on his bandwagon and do something like instantly, you know, I am the ex-partner of James Thierry. But she's kind of been very slow, and you know, as I say, studied all these disciplines, and put together something pretty formidable, and she's, She's a kind of great, she's a kind of great, she's a very thoughtful, very thoughtful girl, woman. Young woman. Sounds great. Yeah, and we want to do something quite quick. Uh, I mean, she's um, currently working in Paris on something. I, I was actually going to go to Paris during that kind of London Fashion Week, but, but she's coming to London in in the second week of March, but I could easily, we could find a rehearsal space in Paris, work on some stuff and show it to you, and uh, just see where it goes. Um, and then I showed her some of my films, and you know, she was so, because she knew, didn't know what to expect. And some of the films, as you would imagine, are quite humorous, and some are, Love so I'm a sort of part, yeah, because there's the other thing I did, I was in, uh, I was at um, Al Photographique, and I, and I was in one of the rooms last year when it was, year before last, where it was Christian Lacroix selection, and there was a room where there were photographs, and in order to protect the photographs from the sun, they had this kind of, win this window blind, like a curtain. And I just kind of filmed it because it was it was blowing in the wind and you could see the sun nice. and you could see the kind of shadow of the radiator. And then I thought this would make a great film. And then in the same room I photographed some mug shots, police photos of gypsies who were taken to concentration camps in south of France, uh, like in 1943, 1942. And I had this brilliant idea of using this massively slowed down curtain with these mysterious finger-like shadows as a means as a means of exposing these um, these photographs by kind of bringing them out of nothing into this into this sort of curtain. That you're not sure where it's from, what it does, why it is, and then dissolving back in again and bringing out other and I've. Uh, and it's, it's a piece called Witness One, and it has a very powerful, kind of melancholic piece of music. And it is, it's sensationally beautiful. So you're going to organize to send me some I, music? I will, yeah, I will, yeah, it's your mail address. No, I'm going right? to write to yeah. my... Yeah. Uh, so I'll send you that, and then subsequently I went to, when I was in Krakow, I went to Auschwitz and, and Birkenau. Wow. And I shot some photographs of, again, mug shots. And also some, if you go to Birkenau, they have the original kind of huts where there were like 200 Jews were kept. Previously, there had been sort of 50 horses kept in the same barracks. So 200, 200 Jews, 50, 50 horses. And what I noticed that these were built from kind of, oh, you don't have any eyes. From, um, Should I water the plant? <laughs> from, um, they were built from, um, like wooden slats, you know, side by side. And I noticed that these wooden, wooden slats had these beautiful, 
kind of patterns, you know, like knot holes. Mm. And they were kind of gorgeous, and some of them were like faces. And so I, I had this sort of fantasy idea that in this kind of barren uh, culture that may be the only beautiful sights that, you know, Jews saw as they're about to, to go to the, to the gas ovens were these beautiful wooden, you know, wooden patterns. So I remade Witness 1 as Witness 2 with the same piece of music with, instead of having the, the, the kind of permanent image of the, of the, of the, the window blind, the permanent image out of which the, these haunted Jewish faces emerge are these kind of wooden slats. And because they're kind of vertical, they then merge with the vertical um, wire fence posts and also the kind of goon towers. And, and the interesting thing is that the, with, the, with, the, with the gypsy photographs, you're not sure why these people are photographed. With the photographs of the, of, of, of the Jews, it's very clearly a photograph of a Jew, a Polish Jew staring at you, full face, defiantly, with the legend at the bottom of the frame, so-and-so, so-and-so, born so-and-so, brought into Auschwitz on such and such a day, killed on such and such a day. And sometimes the, the entry date and the death date is like seven days, nine days, two weeks. So it's not an Auschwitz film that kind of hits you over the head, but it is, it's kind of got everything. So she also responded, obviously, uh, Raphael obviously responded, to, certainly to the first witness film, because again, it had that sort of flowing robe feel to it. So until you see them, yeah. that's, that's the story. Okay, thank you. Yeah.